Hello, and welcome to Masonic Avenue, where we discuss art, philosophy, and Freemasonry. My name is Tony, and I am a Master Mason in San Francisco, California. This video merely offers my own personal opinions and does not necessarily reflect Masonry in general. A special video today, The Lord's Prayer, like you've never seen it before, The Art and Mystical Symbolism of La Pater, brought to us by Brother Alphonse Mucha. La Pater was originally published in Europe in 1899. Now, many of the images and texts that I will be referencing and quoting in today's video come from this book that you see on the right. This is called La Pater, Alphonse Mucha's Symbolist Masterpiece and the Lineage of Mysticism by author Thomas Nagovin. This book, which incorporates La Pater, was published in 2018. And it's actually much more expansive. This talks about the biography of Alphonse Mucha. It talks about mysticism and esotericism and hermetic philosophy. So it's quite a substantial book. Um, and it's actually quite difficult to find images from the original La Pater online with a simple Google search. So special thanks for permission from Century Guild and author Thomas Nagovin uh, for allowing some of the images in this video. I will include their link at the end. You can find them at centuryguild.net. Le Pater was created by this man, Alphonse Mucha. Some people say Mucha, but I'm going to say in this video, Mucha. Mucha had a tremendous influence on the Art Nouveau movement at the turn of the last century, and he became a cultural icon for the Slavic people in general, and Czechs in particular. Mucha happened to also be a Freemason, and I believe that his study of Masonic philosophy greatly influenced his personal works. In many ways, Masonry is a mix and confluence of diverse philosophies, including Platonism, Kabbalah, Western and Eastern thought, and some of this influence is reflected in the imagery and symbolism of La Pater. La Pater was Mucha's opus, a treatise and meditation for his response to the human condition. Now, while this video is about a prayer, I should point out that Masonry itself is non-denominational. Masons come from all backgrounds. Famous Masons have included Muslims, Jews, Hindus, Protestant Christians, Catholic Christians, and even some who identify with nature-based religions. Le Pater is an entire book reflecting upon only this one short prayer, the Lord's Prayer, maybe the most famous prayer in all of Christianity. And each line of that prayer is accompanied by one of these symbols in Mucha's book. Each symbol is expounded with at least three pages of impressive illustrations, esoteric imagery, uh, impressions, and poetry. So we're going to see these images come up again and again throughout this video. Each of these words, of course, would have been memorized by Mucha since he was a small child. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Amen. Starting with our Father who art in heaven, the all-seeing eye of God, the trinity of creation depicted in the triangle, the source of our material world. Cosmic waves expanding outward to the stars like the ever-expanding universe. Awakening slowly from his earthly place, primal mankind, moving from disinterest to recognition, lumbers forward into the light, crawling in awe and celebration toward the newly discovered ideal. Hallowed be thy name. The four-letter sacred name of God. In Hebrew, from right to left, this is yud heh vov -Hey known as the Tetragrammaton. Jewish Kabbalists believe the Word of God created the universe. That is, the words themselves had power. So here we have what is called, quote, the soundless sound, the all-enveloping vibration from which life springs, end quote. Quote, bells sound the name of God, the ethereal waves spread the word outward through the cosmos, end quote. The Christian value placed on the Word of God is reflected in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 1, quote, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, end quote. Quote, 
the curious seekers among humanity taking the first steps toward clarity of spirit reach an outcropping far above the valley filled with the masses of their brethren here we see a priest lighting incense and holy smoke they prostrate themselves in awe before the divine creative force end quote now here curiously god is depicted as the divine feminine up above sophia or shekina in ancient texts, wisdom was personified as a woman, not a man. It has been said, quote, wisdom dwells within, there we must seek her. Thy kingdom come. This is the heart from which all things propagate and pulse, not within the chest, but behind it, outside of time. Here the primal people bask in the presence of their mother, descended to earth. She is calm and nurturing, comforting, maternal, radiant. One, tra one feeling transcends all others, divine love. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Crowns of flowers, thorns, and fruit represent the gamut of human experience, a trinity entwined, one nourishing the other into one unity, the attracting principle from which spirit and matter embrace. As above, so below is an often repeated phrase in mystical traditions, and this seems echoed, perhaps, in the phrase, on earth as it is in heaven. Quote, Here, two children cling to their mother amidst the fallen of their tribe. Lightning strikes across the sky. Mankind is powerless against the forces of nature. End quote. One transcends with acceptance, endurance given by the Creator. Life is fecund, and while death is inevitable, new life grows and carries on with hope for a brighter tomorrow when the storm clouds subside. Give us this day our daily bread. A circle of birds surround the cosmos in power and peace, symbolizing a crown for God's glory. Quote, Humanity feeds on a river of nourishing milk provided by Mother Earth in the background, end quote. We also see in the background the illuminated figure, which is divinity. Her glowing heart feeds the soul, so both body and soul are fed and nourished. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Quote, the blossoming hammer of renewal represents the fall of mankind from paradise. The tree of paradise grows from the hammer of labor and toil, the lot of man outside the garden. Speaking of hammers, the hammer or gavel is also important in Masonic symbolism. Freemasons believe that chiseling a rock or ashlar from rough to smooth represents the effort to try to improve oneself in disposition and morality. Call this spiritual alchemy, if you will. It has been said that to err is human, to forgive divine, or that an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. Likewise, this line in the prayer also represents a more difficult charge for mankind. Show mercy just as we expect mercy shown to us. In other words, the social compact, karma, reciprocity. Like the story of Cain murdering his brother Abel, here we see a man in the center with a weapon in his right hand, poised to inflict the law of man upon the whimpering fellow at his side, kneeling, begging for mercy. Above, a mesmerizing, towering angel boldly presents itself and forbids this murder, this act of revenge. The material and the spiritual enjoin in the act of forgiveness as man transcends his animal nature. One might also pause to consider the idea that evil, perhaps, comes from not from the divine, but rather from free will itself. Perhaps part of the divine plan is to test if people are capable of rising above, or as we read earlier, to emulate the divine will on earth as it is in heaven. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Here, the serpent is bound. In ancient texts, the serpent was often considered a symbol of good and wisdom. In contrast, 
In the Judeo-Christian view, often the serpent is a trickster, a tempter. So here, that serpent is bound, so as to not allow the proverbial Adam and Eve to wander again into temptation. Of course, the critical thinker might question why the temptation was introduced into Eden in the first place. Was this merely entrapment for a temptation mankind was too weak to resist? So too, we pray, lead us not into temptation. Quote, the soul, now enlightened, moves through the ether, dreamlike and luminous. Its brilliant presence attracts evil, swirling attention from the shadows in the glowing eyes and tensed fangs of dragons and malcontent spirits. End quote. I'm reminded of the concept of the preta, spelled P-R-E-T-A, which you might want to look up if you're curious. It also means hungry ghost, and that idea permeates many cultures. Continuing, quote, the spirit of heaven encircles, protecting the thoughts of the traveler and ensuring safety on the path toward wisdom and peace, end quote. Perhaps this invokes that Zoroastrian message, good thoughts, good words, good deeds. Amen. You can learn more at the MUCA Foundation and website, and you can also check out Century Guild of California at centuryguild.net if you would like to check out that lovely book about Le Pater and Alphonse MUCA. Thank you.